basically what we mean by blue economy is the essentially ocean dependent economy which is uh, sustainable so because we have learned from the past that if you don't have a sustainable uh, we land up into more problems than the solving anything so which is more sustainable now the what exactly the economy one is we say that the resources especially the resources of food uh, by 2050 we will be about 9 billion people and land area is not growing so you need a food nutrients from the ocean and uh, the fishery and the other uh, things would be very critical for us to explore where are the resources and how sustainably we can use those resources that means what would be the roughly potential of any given region that that depending upon that that much harvest or of the fishery can be done that means suppose i have a potential of 100 million uh, i can say okay i will harvest 10 15 20 million so that uh, there is a chance of uh, re uh, generation of those resources so this is one area where which is very critical the second area is which is very critical is the mineral resources and many of the resources if you take a cobalt and nickel which is very critical for electronics industry um, india do not have any viable resource on land so we will have to look for the resources in the ocean and uh, there are india has been working for quite some time last two decades or so and we have located uh, the resources but these resources are quite deep into the ocean about 4000 meter and onwards so currently no technology exists nowhere in the world that they can uh, really mine it technology exists to bring some kind the material on the top that's not a problem but it is for test purpose you can't do on a commercial level so that technology has to be developed so this is an area where india has invested now to build the technology about this the third is about the energy now of course i won't talk about the petroleum everybody knows that comes from the ocean but uh, there is another resource which is very important is a gas hydrate it's a methane gas uh, at the depth beyond uh, 3000 meter and so because of the pressure it gets solidified and it's called gas hydrate because the water is also get mixed with it and that is a huge resource has been located in uh, manadi and Kave, uh, krishna godavari delta but the problem is it is under pressure as soon as you try to remove the pressure and bring it up the methane gas may escape so you need a build technology which allows you to exploit this resource without losing the methane gas to the atmosphere so this is a major development uh, which is then lots of thinking is going on whether to pump the carbon dioxide there and take it out and so many things but still you know there is not much um, commercial way you can exploit as of now but i'm sure in coming years we would be able to develop that the second area which is uh, very important is offshore wind energy there are some areas on the land which is being exploited uh, but uh, in offshore the advantage is the consistency of the wind which is very critical for any energy generation and uh, but there what you need is uh, the technology for uh, creating those kind of a wind farms which needs very specific kind of a foundation uh, and many areas on the sea where the area is suitable from the wind point of view but the substrate is uh, soft you know with sand and mud so you need a very specialized kind of a technology to have the foundation also to store the energy and bring it back to the shore 
is another thing. Plus, you need to service those things. So you need a nearby port and related infrastructure to do. The, the other area which is very important is water. And water is going to be scarce because we are not going to get any additional rainfall. The rainfall is more or less similar, but the population is growing. If you compare uh, with the independence and today, our population has grown almost four times. But the water which is we are getting remain more or less less. And further population is going to increase. So the water requirement, I mean shortage is already there in any big cities you will see you are provided water with the tanker and all. So it is not going to happen, it is already happening. But uh, if you really see the what we get a rain is essentially from the ocean. Now we did some experiment that whether you can mimic the monsoon by doing some engineering and do that. And uh, India is the only country who has successfully uh, put uh, three plants in Lakshdweep where what is done is that the surface water is brought to a chamber which is vacuum so it starts boiling and the evaporation is taken to other chamber and you bring water from about 800 meter below to cool this uh, vapors and you get a fresh water and uh, the advantage is uh, we don't use the complete 100 percent of the water so that what you discharge back, unlike in RO plants, it's a very highly concentrated brine. Here we take about 8 to 10 percent of the water only. So when you discharge back, is more or less like uh, um, fresh, I mean the saline water itself. And it assimilates much faster. Unlike the brine which you discharge, it's very heavy. It sinks to the bottom and wherever it goes, it destroys the marine life. So this is a very environmental friendly method and the plants are working for last 12 years in Luxweep um, and six more plants are going to come. This is also more or less same principle as how you generate the uh, thermal energy, same principle. So now we are working on a um, plant which is coupling both that you generate the energy and you generate the water, fresh water also.